Hello, 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 everybody. Here is Dr. Gowile again talking about different topics in science. Remember, guys, that we create and design this podcast to let everybody know about Harvard University and the magazine of Harvard Medical School. You can also visit our official website, which is magazine.hme.harvard.edu. You will be able to browse thousands of thousands of articles by issue or by topic. You will be asking Dr. Gowile which topics do we have? Research, community, education, care delivery hours and achievement. All right, the article to review today is COVID's damage lingers in the hearts. Researchers increasingly find that the effects of infection by SARS-CoV-2 extend to the cardiovascular system. All right, guys, so I'm going to straight away to this a beautiful article about COVID-19. As the COVID-19 pandemic was getting underway in early 2020, doctors in Wuhan, China, began to report that many patients hospitalized with the disease had cardiac injuries. Heart attacks were frequent, especially in patients with underlying risk factors, and there were numerous cases of myocarditis, which occurs when the heart muscle layers become inflamed. Roughly a quarter of patients with severe COVID-19 had elevated blood levels of troponin, a protein marker of cardiac damage. From Cambridge, Massachusetts at Harvard University Medical School, I want to remind guys that you can also download this article from our official website. Alright, so I continue. This evidence altered how COVID-19 was viewed, previously considered primarily a form of pneumonia. It now took a coronary dimension. We began to understand that it's also a cardiovascular disease, says Peter Levy, the Malin Crow professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and a cardiologist at Brigham a Women Hospital. Hospitalization and death from COVID-19 have since fallen off. The results of widespread vaccination and the population growing immunity against severe diseases. But SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus that causes COVID-19, is still with us, along with the risk it poses at heart health, especially in people with blood arteries, hypertension, diabetes, and other dispersing factors. Millions of people who recover from COVID-19 have gone on to develop lingering cardiovascular symptoms, including abnormal heartbeats, dizziness, and shortness of breath. The number of COVID-19 cases is once again speaking and the coronavirus continue to evolve. The latest Omicron variant BA2.86 has more than 30 mutations that could allow it to evade the immune system defense. Given the ongoing three research into COVID-19 cardiovascular effects remains vitally important, says Annie Marin, a cardiologist and a Harvard Medical School instructor in medicine at Beth Israel Discount Medical Center. We need a greater understanding of the associated pathophysiology to develop better treatments. In most people, especially those who have been vaccinated, COVID-19 produces flu-like symptoms that typically resolve within a few days or weeks, but other people progress to a second and a more dangerous phase of the disease, as pro-inflammatory protein called cytokines proliferate in the blood. During this so-called cytokine storm, the immune system becomes hyperactive, causing a different set of problems, say Dara Lee Lewis, she is a Harvard Medical School instructor in medicine and Brigham and Women's and Director of Non-Invasive Testing and Co-Director of the Women's Cardiology Program at the Low Cardiology Group in Boston, Massachusetts. Patients can develop weakened heart muscles, low oxygen levels, blood clots, fluid in lungs, problems that may require hospitalizations. We need a greater understanding of the associated pathophysiologists to develop better treatments.
More importantly, pre-existing cardiac risk factors such as coronary artery disease and obesity which can predispose patients to metabolic inflammation raise the likelihood for poor outcomes. People with vulnerable hearts, Lee Lewis explains, are more likely to succumb to COVID-19 complications than others who do not have these risk factors. In a worst-case scenario, patients could experience a type 1 myocardial infarction, which is a heart attack cause when a blood clot blocks flow the arteries. But COVID-19 patients are also unusual prone to a different type of heart attack called a type 2 myocardial infarction. In these cases, the problem isn't a blockage in the arteries, but rather a mismatch between oxygen supply and oxygen demand. Fever and inflammation accelerate heart rate and increase metabolic demands on many organs, including the heart. If infected, lungs are incapable of effectively exchanging oxygen and carbon dioxide, then stretch hearts might suffer damage due to insufficient oxygen. We say that early in the pandemic, myocarditis was also a major concern, especially for student athletes. These kids didn't need to just go back to work and life, she says. They need to get back to competitive play. Some students she cared for who has been sick with COVID-19 show up the chest pain, racing hearts, shortness of breath, and evidence of myocarditis or magnetic resonance imaging. And some studies from around the world were reporting that up on one third of patients who had recovered from COVID-19 also show evidence and asymptomatic myocarditis on imaging studies. This was traveling since post viral myocarditis is no cause of sudden cardiac disease in athletes. We worry that many of our students' athletes will be unable to return to competitive play. Like Lewis said, fortunately, the asymptomatic cases turn out to be uneventful and the affect students make full recoveries. Asymptomatic myocarditis wasn't as big an issue as we Initially, for it would be leak Lewis ads, so we stop doing MRIs on everyone who walk in the dark. That COVID-19 could be so closely associated with heart health was an entirely unspec. Scientists already knew that other types of infections such as flu and bacterial sexes can amplify cardiac risk factors. It's not uncommon for older people to have inactive plagues in coronary arteries. The plagues can be disabilitated by a localized inflammatory response to remote infections. COVID-19 put a spotlight on this connection and led a greater awareness of the interplay between infections and cardiac disease. But as an unknown virus, SARS-CoV-2 raised many new questions. One example, whether the virus infect myocytes, the cell responsible for heart contractions, was initially a big issue, Levy says. Research has since shown that myocards and the myos for the most part escape infection. Instead, SARS-CoV-2 damaged the heart indirectly by unleashing inflammatory reaction that affect cardiovascular function. Respiratory epithelial cells are considered to be key target of infection, as are pericytes, which are cells that grab around capillaries. When infected by the virus, these cells release cytokines that in turn act in another cell type that collectively form an interactive lining and all blood vessels in the body. This lining, known as cardiovascular endothelium, can be thought of as an organ in and of itself. 
leaks say slavis. The endothelium has a huge job in preventing inappropriate blood clots and allowing blood vessels to contract and delay when they normally should. Normally, the endothelium keeps blood flowing in a liquid state, but when cytokines active endothelial cells, these cells transition of the defensive posture, they mobilize macrophages and other immune cells and release molecules that promote blood clotting. Cytokines speak to cells throughout the body, explains Jeremy Luban, a professor of Massachusetts Clan Medical School, who also serves on the executive commitment at the Massachusetts Consortium of Pathogen Readiness at Harvard Medical School Lee. Multi-institutional effort to slow a spread of COVID-19 and prepare for future pandemics. Microvascular damage has also been implicated in the long-term symptoms that now constitute a growing focus of COVID-19 research. Even five months after the acute phase of the illness, we can detect this disturbance. Libby says he adds the answers of the mystery of what causes long COVID may found in microvascular dysfunction. Bruce Levy, the Parker Francis Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and co-founder of Brigham and Women's COVID Recovery Center agrees. The fact that micro vessels are present through the body, Levi says, might explain why long COVID has been associated with more than 200 symptoms affecting nearly every organ. Brain fog and the confusion of forgetfulness that attends it, for instance, might result from inflammation effects on blood vessels in the central nervous system, while long term cardiovascular symptoms might arise from inflammation in the small vessel leading to and surrounding the heart. Research are also making headway on how best to approach cardiovascular trees in acutely ill patients with COVID-19. Given a high prevalence of clotting disorder, it might be assumed that anticoagulants and antiplex treatments would improve outcomes, but some clinicians caution that bleeding trees from those drugs may overweigh their potential benefits. Advances are also being made in the use of anticytokines such as glucose corticoids and monoclonal antibodies to counter systematic inflammation. Although the pandemic seems to be resenting, Luban caution against complementary cardiovascular disease remains a leading killer and after decline for years, death from heart attack and stroke rose again in SARS-CoV-2 spread worldwide. Fortunately, the virus has not yet evolved to a more virulent form, he says adding at easy hurting the passing protection against hospitalization and severe disease seems to be hanging in there. But who knows what will happen this year? This virus has surprised us every step of the way. Alright guys, you can download this beautiful article from the magazine of Harvard Medical School. This article has been wrote by Charles Smith, a writer based in Maine. Alright, see you next time. Bye bye.